Today we're going to look at every sex difference in Pokemon. And rather than just listing them like some lazy person just getting information off of Bulbapedia, let's actually explain why each sexual difference is there. Also, know that this is technically part two, but thankfully with a topic like this, you don't actually have to watch the first part first to understand it. You can watch the first part next. Though, the first part is a much better introduction, so, well, here's a link to it. Another big way to tell the differences of the sex in Pokemon are their colors. Female Butterfree have a dark spot on the bottom of their wings, while the males don't. Butterfree's wing designs most closely match those of the black-veined white butterfly and the cabbage white butterfly, the latter of which often reflects this exact difference. This is common for butterflies, though, wing patterns having slight variations based on the sex. Oftentimes, it's just to help the butterflies determine the sex of the other while further away. And this is the same case with Beautyfly. Beautyfly males have larger red spots on its wings. Male Doduo and Dodrio have black necks while the female ones have tan ones. Now, these Pokemon are based on kiwis, ostriches, and dodo birds all in one. But they get this neck trait from the ostrich and their bodies from kiwis. However, it's the ostrich that has this same color difference in its feathers. The males are black and the females are tan. So they simply transferred the color aspect onto the ostrich part of the Pokemon. Black and tan, necks. Magikarp and Gyarados have different colored whiskers based on their sex. And just like Doduo and Dodrio, Magikarp are also based on a number of animals, both the common carp and the yellow eye rockfish. More so the latter. It just gets the whiskers from the carp. And in carp, the whiskers have absolutely nothing to do with telling the sex of it. It's all in the lower fins. And as for Gyarados, Chinese dragons aren't real. But traditionally speaking, they don't even have blue whiskers. They are most commonly gold, red, or silver. But both Magikarp and Gyarados are based on a Chinese legend, so perhaps we can get by with some Chinese alchemy, since Pokemon pulls more than a little inspiration from alchemy. The male Magikarp have gold whiskers, and the female white, or silver. Gold in alchemy represents the sun, and thus the masculine, and silver represents the moon, thus the feminine. When Magikarp evolves, the feminine silver whiskers remain, while the masculine gold turns blue, because Chinese dragon. <laughs> Zatu's differences in the number of yellow stripes found at their base. Males have three, while females have two. Zatu is based both on the resplendent Quetzal and Native American Kachina dolls. These birds' main bit of sexual dimorphism is in the length of the tail. And in all of my research into the Kachina dolls, the one bit of evidence I found was this doll. It has a single yellow stripe at its base, which is apparently part of male dress, so having one extra stripe on the male makes a good bit of sense. Female giraffe rigs have more yellow on their bodies, while the males are pretty much split 50-50. Giraffes have pretty much an infinite amount of different possible patterns, and their sex has nothing to do with what that pattern is. So perhaps, instead of having this difference in giraffe rig based on actual giraffes, each pattern may be based on a different aspect of giraffe rig's design. The name giraffe rig is a palindrome. That means the word can be read forwards and backwards, and they are the same. This reflects that giraffe rig has a head on its tail too, and that the males have a 50-50 split. Meanwhile, for the female design, we go to the Civitherium, the ancient, now extinct ancestor of the giraffe that giraffe rig may be based on. Only its back legs and a little bit of its behind have this odd different design, rather than it being 50-50. Moving on, here's a quick note. These next four connections are a bit loose, but bear with me. Ludicolo males have thicker stripes in the body, and this may be the loosest reason in this whole video. It may just be because of the old males have bigger parts part of nature, but perhaps being based on Mexican dancers, it also has to do with the traditional dress of Mexican dancers. While the women wear dresses covered in a variety of thinner colored stripes, male garb, when it has stripes and colors, tends to be fewer colors, and those colors tend to be thicker. Like I said, it's, it's pretty loose. Another loose connection is that of Snover. Snover is a small conifer tree, and here the males have a brown middle section matching their lower trunk, and females' middle sections are white, matching the snow-covered upper part. There is no natural equivalent that I could find for this, but I have two theories. The first theory is that the brown lower part, being a continuation of the bottom, acts kind of like pants, whereas the white flowing down is more like a long dress.
Clearly, this is the sillier of the two theories. The other one looks into real conifer trees a bit more. While in the real world, conifers produce both male pine cones and female pine cones, in the Pokemon world, Snover may produce one or the other based on their own sex. Male pine cones produce pollen and are significantly smaller and lighter than the female pine cones, which produce seeds. These heavier pine cones on the female would be holding down all the branches within the tree, making them move around less as the Pokemon moves, which in turn means less snow falls off of it. It's possible. Uh. Buizel and Floatzel males have two spots on their back instead of the single one on the female. And oh boy, <laughs> at this point Game Freak really is just pulling differences out of their butts. I looked at weasels, otters, stoats, I even looked at flippin' buoy designs, and nothing! Some species of weasels have spots, but some don't, and it has nothing to do with sex. So I guess I have to BS a reason for this too. Here's the theory. The one thing that weasels do have as a trait of sexual dimorphism is their size. Males are much larger, and while in buizel these spots are just spots, when it evolves they become bulges. Perhaps these are air pockets to help with buoyancy, the whole point of buizel and floatzel. And since the males are larger, they need an extra one to stay afloat. Hippopotas have inverted colors from each other, these colors that they use for camouflage, so the inverted nature of them may just be there to help them determine each other's sex. As for its evolved form, Hippowdon females are black while the males are brown. And while in my research I've found no physical aspects to compare this to real hippos, it does make sense in a social sense. Hippos group into a large number of females, all ruled over by one extra powerful male. Being able to easily determine where this male is in your group would be beneficial when you need protection. And it also makes it apparent when an outsider male is coming into the group. This, of course, of course only works if Hippowdon in the wild act the same as real hippos. Frillish and Jellicent are both very different. The idea with their design is that they are frilly and magnificent. Like the upper class folks during the days of enlightenment, they are blue and pink, the gender defining colors, and they have aspects reflecting the dress of people from that time period. The frills and necklaces, the massive moustaches and the puffy collars, it's all here. Meowstick have inverted colors from each other, but the difference is much deeper than that. The males are designed with more pointed edges, more messy and spiked up fur, while the females are well kept and curvy. Even the feet resemble typical socks on the male, but thigh high socks on the female. The female also has more hip fur, resembling a skirt. The females are also smaller. This all in general reflects masculine and feminine traits, in general and in dress. And even how cats act, tomcats tend to be much more rambunctious and larger, and get into much more fights, hence the rougher fur, while the females get to spend more time just cleaning themselves. Krogunk females have shorter white stripes on their torsos. These stripes are meant to simulate bandages, as fighters often wrap parts of themselves up in bandages before a fight to protect their skin, like Sheik. And yes, this connection is loose, but it could be that these bandages are higher up to show off more skin, much like how most female fighters will show off their midriff while fighting. And that also makes Krogunk a good segue into the next category, feminine aesthetics. Some Pokemon have sexual dimorphism for no reason other than design purposes. Most commonly, it's to make the females more feminine. The only way to explain the nature reasons for why these are the case is that these are traits that are considered desirable to the opposite sex and helps the Pokemon find mates. Female Pikachu and Raichu have chips out of their tails, making the Pikachu's tail look like an adorable heart, and upon evolving, the female's tail merely isn't pointed. It's curved. Gotta love a curvy lady chew. Apom and Ambipom females just have longer hair. Heracross is interesting though. The males have the traditionally male horn of the rhino beetle, while the females have heart-shaped horns. I suppose that is better than having no horns at all, which is the case with real rhino beetles. Wobbuffet females have lipstick, which is very strange. Ah! But beyond design, it may point towards an old theory. You've probably heard that Wobbuffet is actually just its tail and the rest is just a big blow up punching bag, right? Well, an old theory of mine is that it's also secretly an evolution of unknown. And having lipstick, a very human trait, would support that. Since unknown are the creators, but also the reflectors of human nature. It's very, it's very complicated, but you can watch this video here for more details. Moving on, Metadite males have higher ears and the female's ears are lower. And if you ask me, this difference does a really good 
good job at making the males look more like boys and the females more like girls. The females have lower ears, which resembles longer hair, pigtails perhaps, while the higher ears on the male makes them appear to stick out more, like when little boys have very short, buzzed hair possibly even shaved, like Shaolin monks. Roselia females have longer body leaves, resembling a dress, while Roserade females have longer body leaf cape things, doing the same. Melodic females have longer hair, obviously feminine, while Tangrowth females have more pink on their fingers. I couldn't find any instance of this in real vines, so I assume more pink equals more feminine. Pachiritsu males have a longer stripe on its face, which may be sort of a plumage, but it also being lower on the males makes them appear slightly more aggressive, sort of like angry eyebrows. While the female's stripe being higher makes their cute eyes pop out even more, they look even kinder. So cute! This aspect continues with whiskers too, though for the masculine aspect, perhaps as whiskers resemble mustaches. And in the case for some Pokemon, that's they're one and the same. Male Rattata and Raticate have longer whiskers than the females, and Swalot males have longer whiskers too. Male Kadabra and Alakazam have longer mustaches, and male Krikatoons have longer mustaches too. And for the next category, let's talk about plant reasons. So we start with Venusaur. The female has a bulging ovary and pistil, the female reproductive parts of flowers that receive the pollen from the air, though it could also be a seed sprouting from the female parts. Meganium males have longer filaments and anthers, the male sexual organs of flowers. Female cacturns have a large spike in the middle of their body, while males just have the standard spikes all the way down. This was a tricky one. There are a few possibilities. One is that when a cactus enters its blooming phase, it grows these large spike arms out of it, eventually to bloom into flowers. Though all cactuses technically do this, it may have just been added to the female since blooming and flowers is a feminine trait. Also, cacturn is also based on a scarecrow, which are traditionally male, and in old farmer's clothing, often a long sleeve button-up shirt that the smaller spikes on the male may be resembling. It could also even be a combination of these two elements. Gloom and Vile Plume's spot patterns change based on sex. The females have fewer, yet bigger spots. And this one was also tricky. Plants and flowers are almost always both sexes at once, and these two Pokémon are based on various types of corpse flowers, Vile Plume being the corpse lily. And while not at all based on sex, White blotches on the corpse lily is just a variation of it. Having the two different vile plumes and glooms represent this change is fine, I guess. It's not accurate to plant sex, but it's passable, as these are fictional animals after all. Now let's look at the last category, single sex Pokemon. This means the Pokemon of this species are only one sex. Pokemon are able to breed with any other Pokemon within the same egg group, in case you were wondering how single sex Pokemon are able to breed. And these will be ordered female to male, and from the most interesting reasons to the simpler reasons. But as a segue from dual sexed Pokemon, Combi has both male and females. In fact, the vast majority of Combi are male, just like actual honeybees. But the few females that exist have this red mark on their lower face, which signifies that they are able to evolve, because only the female Combis can evolve into Vespaquin, which takes the role of queen in the hive. Salazzles are based on whiptail lizards. These lizards are an all-female species that breed asexually meaning by themselves. They can share their genetic material with others, but they don't have to. Kangaskhan being loosely based on a monstrously deformed kangaroo dinosaur beast thing, or female due to their nature. They all have pouches and they all have babies inside of them always, even fresh out of the egg. Weird, but it's just a design choice. Kangaroos are often depicted as always having a baby in the pouch since that's what they're most famous for. Miltink is a dairy cow. That should be self-explanatory. Females produce milk and have mammary glands. In cow's cases, in giant udders. Frostlass is based on a Yukiona, a Japanese female ice spirit wearing a kimono. Cresselia is the legendary Pokemon of lunar forces and joyful beauty. In alchemy and other similar things, the moon represents the feminine powers, while the sun is masculine. Happiny, Chansey, and Blissey are interesting, and they aren't based on any particular animal, but instead, perhaps they are based on the whole concept of motherhood. They frequently lay eggs, they carry them around like a marsupial mother, and are extremely caring and loving. They are the choice Pokemon for Pokemon centers after all. They also have long hair, they are pink, they have high-pitched voices, and they are very curvy. Just being an oval well, kind of makes you as curvy as you can be. Flabebe, Floette, and Florgis are based on fae and nymphs, female nature spirits that can take many forms. Wormadam is based on the bagworm, which the females, even in adult form, do not develop wings like its male counterpart. Smoochum and Jinx are based on Gongoro girls, as well as the Yamanba, a female yokai. Also, 
Let's just look at them. Volibi and Mandibuzz are interesting. Vultures are not inherently female, but these Pokemon were made to be counterparts to Rufflet and Braviary, an all-male bird line. But why all female? Well, their Japanese name explains it. Japanese Mandibuzz is actually Vulgina, which is... Wait, 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 is it really? Vulgina? <laughs> The, the all the all female vultures Volgina. that can't be right okay um okay it's vulture Re Regina it's Latin for queen so it's Volgina not Volgina Volgina or something okay Volgina <laughs> what were they thinking Bound Sweet Steeny and Serena are fruit girls essentially very feminine in design and that's about it. Fruit can be seen as feminine, as they are plump and contain seeds, essentially the babies of plants. But the other fruit Pokémon are in the 50-50 category, half male, half female, so really I think it's just down to the design. Same goes for Petalil and Lilligant, very feminine looking flower Pokémon. Illumise and Latias are both female Pokémon, with male counterparts that are technically different Pokémon, those being Volbeat and Latios. Mothim, like Wormadam, is a bagworm. Male bagworms, however, turn into moths. Tornado Natus, Thunderous, and Landorus are based on various Shinto gods of nature, all of which are male, though they're also somewhat based on genies, which are mostly depicted as male. Plus, look at those manly muscles, and those amazing mustaches. Rufflet and Braviary are based on American bald eagles, which, much like vultures in Mandibuzz's case, aren't monosexed. But in Pokemon's case, they are the male counterparts to Rufflet and Mandibuzz. Braviary, being a red, white, and blue bald eagle in the Unova region which is based on the US, essentially makes it the United States of America's mascot Pokemon. America's motto is even Home of the Brave, referring of course to its military force, which is by vast majority, male. Gallade is based on various things such as Gallant Princes, as well as Roman Gladiators' Corinthian helmets and various sword fighting stances, all of which were primarily used by males. Tauros is a wild bull, bulls being the male counterparts to cows, and they have large horns and are pretty much bigger in general. Tauros is widely accepted to be the counterpart to Miltank. Tyrogue, Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, Hitmontup, Sock and Throw are all humanoid, most closely resembling human males, and each resembles and uses a different fighting style and fighting, both in humans and in animals in the wild, is a very masculine thing to do. Be it for sport, for surviving, or for trying to get laid. So there you have it, every sex difference in Pokemon thus far. Though I have a feeling that the next few generations may not have as many. So maybe there won't be a continuation of this video, but not to worry because I have plenty of other awesome Pokemon videos right here. And clicking that little eye in the upper right will bring you to part one, just in case you watched this part first. To be honest, I think part one is much, much better. Most of the more interesting Pokemon are in that one. But thanks for watching this regardless, and until next time, please remember to never stop using that noggin.